Good morning. And we wake to know of God's presence within us. And I do want to engage in prayer first because the subject matter for today is pretty sensitive for many people. And I just want to open up first into God's presence to hold protection over you and also to ensure that God's words comes forth in this. So we just breathe deep. Center yourself in your way upon the remembrance that is God's presence within you. Be freed and released from any religious understanding, any spiritual language that you've been given that does not reflect the nature of a perfect and loving God. And we breathe as one. And we call upon the one name that is given, as Yahweh said, call upon Yahweh Elohim, that is my name. I am that I am. Call upon my name anytime you are in need of distress. And what I wish to extend today is, first of all, prayer for all those that are facing any form of distress this week especially a wonderful chapel out in uh, Muskogee, Oklahoma, where they experienced vandalism. And in my understanding, when we see situations like this, this is an opportunity, a, a gift of revelation. But on the surface, what happens is we as humans look at this and we get aghast or we get offended or we get upset or we become hurt but how could people do something like this? And in my understanding, it's important that we use this as a time of recognition and revelation. The reality is the individuals that destroyed this ground, the original, the individuals that came against it and named themselves enemy. The reason why I say named themselves enemies is because we hold no enemy. There are all those that were created by God, formed to walk this earth and to do as they are doing upon this earth. But if we continue to name them as enemy, we will continue to hold them in that definition. So if we look to this and understand the importance of seeing this as an instrument of revelation, this reveals the darkness that was within the hearts of those that were hidden off in the periphery, those that were tearing down the church within their words, within their language, within the places that they dwelled. And now what's happened is they've come forth and they've destroyed images. They've destroyed statues. And what happens is many times in situations like this, people form an immediate offense, a righteous indignation, a form of judgment. Instead of looking to this and seeing through it to find God's presence and to look to those individuals that felt they needed to do this and seek what is it that motivated them. But God, we seek you first, not the motivation. We seek you first in love for these individuals. We pray and raise them up in the fullness of grace that they would might hear, recognize, and know your presence within this act. That they are not held in judgment, but they are moved forward in wisdom and discernment. That they are moved to a place of recognition of divine grace within their actions and moved to a place to be freed from the spiritual nature that governed those actions. What you may find is these individuals may have been hurt by individuals that called themselves religious or individuals that called themselves Christian. And they may have been hurt by them in their youth. They may have been hurt by them in their adulthood. But what this act has done has brought it to the forefront, has brought it to a place that these individuals can realize that the counsel that they were given to go forward and bring harm to this ground was wrongful. The feeling that they sensed inside them after they had done this act that they were just wrong and they didn't feel right that you would pray freedom from that feeling so that they would recognize god not guilt not doubt that they would move to the place of recognizing god not how we might exact punishment over them not how we might come against 
their act because we need not come against their act. We need to embrace and become one with God. And as we become one with God, the individuals have the opportunity to, number one, be freed from the spiritual ground that governed them in action. And remember that people lose sight of the fact that the things that people do are governed by the spiritual things within them. Like Stephen, you've heard me say this before, the disciple Stephen, as he was being stoned to death, his life was being taken from him. It wasn't that a statue was being smashed or an image was being stolen, but his physical life was being taken from him by individuals in a crowd that were throwing rocks at him and stoning him to death. And it is written that as his body was giving up life, the crowd heard Stephen's voice cry out from the heavens, Yahweh, forgive them for they know not what they do, for it is the spirits within them that govern that which they do. And this is important to understand as we look at situations like this unfolding, this vandalism that has come against the black churches in America and throughout the world, the vandalism and the, and the oppression that's come against Christians in China, the vandalism and, and abuses that have come forth within the Hindi church within India. We have to remember that this is governed first of a spiritual nature. And Yeshua was teaching us things of a spiritual nature and we did not even understand the things of the earth. So yes, these things are gonna unfold individuals are going to come against holy grounds but that holy ground does not harm god if somebody destroys it god's presence can transform all things even things of a cursed nature into blessing but that can only happen if we engage in the presence of god it can't happen if we form this deception in our minds that says we are somehow justified in anger righteous anger they call it or righteous indignation to my understanding these are deceptions these are formed of a demonic nature they are not righteous the one thing that is righteous is God's holy presence and you need to know that God's presence is the one thing you need to draw upon for the sake of bringing people clarity wisdom and freedom from the acts that they have chosen it is important, like it says, judge not lest you be judged. For if we judge these individuals, we will hold them bound to the spiritual ground that caused them to undertake these actions. And this will perpetuate these actions over and over again. And in my humble opinion, this is what we've been witnessing for over 2,000 years. is a constant state of judgment, a perceived notion of righteous indignation, or righteousness in any form. For again, there is but one state of righteousness, and that is Yahweh's holy presence, Yeshua, the Abun, the life-giving breath of God's presence within. And if we can surrender and submit ourselves fully unto God's presence, we will see these individuals in a new way. Not in the act they perpetrated against us, but in the way that we can see them renewed, healed, and released from the type of counsel in their lives that made them think that this was somehow appropriate to destroy a holy ground. We could look to it and pray to them in the fullness of love, to see them in a new light, not in the way that they present themselves, but in a way that God can restore them to be an individual without these influences. They could be freed from the spirit of vandalism, freed from the spirit of offense that may have come against them in their youth. And I would say also that if you're sitting in that body, that spiritual group of individuals that have been wronged in some way, whether it's the black churches of America, or if it's the Hindu churches, or if it's this beautiful little church of adoration, if you're sitting there and you feel the spirit of offense rise within you, like how could anybody do this? You have to recognize that that is an instrument of revelation showing that there was offense within the individuals that came against this spiritual body, against this holy ground. So you've been equipped by God's grace to turn this situation into an order of blessing, to bless and sanctify this holy ground, to walk around and take the elements of holy water and holy oils, bless and anoint this space, reclaim it into God's presence and release all things of a spiritual nature that rise as you do so. 
then anoint the thresholds, anoint the windows, anoint all places to seal the holy blessing of this place. And then offer thanksgiving as you bless each and every statue or image that was destroyed. Bless it. Throw it away. And leave a holy sanctuary without distraction so that people might find the presence of God within them instead of through the images that they embrace. We grace healing stand here in love for you and offer thanksgiving for the gift of God's grace to flow through you and the blessing of his divine holy wisdom to govern you in all that you do. We are so thankful that God's holy righteousness will rise within you in each breath you receive and we choose this moment to extend ourselves to you in service for anything that you might seek as we stand with you in thanksgiving praise and worship to know that our God is with you in all things and we pray for those individuals that came against this holy ground, that they would once again be raised up in the fullness of clarity, freed from the judgments that have been rest upon them, and moved to a place of holy reckoning to find God's presence to govern their actions, to move to a higher integrity and a spiritual fortitude within their lives. And in this, we extend to you in love, thanksgiving, praise, and worship through the one name that is Yahweh Elohim, and through Yeshua, and the Abun, the life-giving breath that resides within us. We pray for you and offer thanksgiving for here. We sit and wait upon your call anytime you're in need of distress. We are here and look forward to serving you. Take care and have a great week.